came clean and told them that uh, he had been using the drug and he got the treatment he needed and uh, got back on track um, really pretty quickly by the following uh, by the following season. By 1983, he was clean. Talking to Alan Maimon, the co-author of Tim Reins' book, Rock Solid, My Life in Baseball's Fast Lane. So where did Reins get his nickname Rock from? Hopefully it wasn't from carrying rocks of cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's a little bit of a common misconception. Um, he got the nickname pretty early on in his life. He um his build, uh, very, very stocky, very rock solid, um, very much uh, a running back, football running back, prototypical body. And so from a very young age, he was rock um, from the time he you know, played football in Sanford, Florida, where he comes from. And uh, from the, his early childhood, the days when he worshipped uh, O.J. Simpson and wanted nothing more than to be an NFL running back, um, he was rock. From that point on. All right. All right. So, uh, can you take us through the hardships that Ray went because of his uh, lupus diagnosis? Yeah, you know, that to me was the most surprising part of, of this book. Um, mm-hmm. I knew quite a bit about Tim's career. I did not know, however, uh, about the, the lupus diagnosis that he um, received in 1999. So, Let's fast forward to 1999. He had already been in the big leagues for almost 20 years, and he's almost 40 years old by the time he um, is diagnosed with lupus. So what is lupus? Well, you can go to WebMD and find out all about it yourself. But <laughs> Cliff Notes version is it's an autoimmune disorder where your, you know, your immune system basically turns on itself and attacks healthy you know, tissues. So for a baseball player, this is just, you know, it's it's completely debilitating. And he um, was playing with the Oakland Athletics um, at the time in 1999, found that just running from the dugout out to his left field position was was hard. He would be winded. He couldn't even do that. Um, Ultimately got the diagnosis of lupus. And um, for almost anybody else, that would have been a career ender. I mean, come on. The guy's almost 40 years old. He's got lupus. Somehow he battled back from it. Um, It was a very dark time in his life though because of the medications he was on you know there was there was some depression and um he just again to his credit like he had earlier in his career but in a much different uh, set of circumstances he, he battled back and uh by 2001 he was back in the big leagues at the age of 41 Yep. Talking to Alan Maimond, the co-author of Tim Raines' book, Rock Solid, My Life in Baseball's Fast Lane. So what were Raines' contract negotiations like during the atmosphere of collusion? Yeah, both he and his teammate Andre Dawson, probably Andre more so, um, was was a real poster child for for collusion. But Tim as well. Um, Tim uh, arguably had his best season in 1986 led the National League in batting average and by this time had established himself as, a, as one of the best players in the major leagues. The um, contract offer that he received from the Expos after the 86 season did not reflect this. Um, this was the peak of collusion and um, uh, he um, he refused to sign with, with the Expos for what they were offering him. I can't recall the exact terms, but it was a paltry raise, if any, for, for you know a guy who, again, had become one of the best players in the league, so because he missed the signing deadline, and because no he, no, no other team was was offering him anything, because that was the nature of collusion, uh, he couldn't uh, suit up again until May first of the following season. Um, so he sat out the first month of the '87 season, and, and in his first game back in '87, had an incredible game against the Mets. It was a nationally televised game in which he hit a grand slam off of, I believe, Jesse Orozco, game-winning grand slam. Um, such an interesting part of baseball history oh, collusion. Definitely. Yeah, uh, Andre, you know, Andre's famous for having given the Cubs virtually a blank contract. He wanted, his knees were shot by that time. He wanted to play on soft grass, so he went to Cubs uh, general manager Dallas Green and said, I want to play for the Cubs. You pay me what you feel like paying me. And that, that became a famous <laughs> chapter because Andre went on to have his best season in Chicago in 87, MVP season, and, and then ended up getting the, the contract he deserved after that. Tim's situation was a little bit different. He stayed in Montreal, uh, didn't, you know, he loved playing the game, but, but I, I think that there was a little bit of bitterness in there because he wasn't getting 
paid what, what he deserved to get paid because of collusion. Yeah, definitely. So uh, what can you tell us about Reigns' roles in the Pittsburgh drug trials? He didn't testify at the trials themselves. He, he did testify before a grand jury. Okay. And grand jury testimony is, is confidential. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> no, because that, that's an, another fascinating part of baseball history. The 1980s, you got collusion, you got the drug trials. It, it's amazing how it's just been lost to history, and it's so fascinating to me. Absolutely. And then on top of that, you just have players like Tim Raines, who were inc- just incredibly exciting players. Ricky Henderson, Tim Raines. And I'm biased because I kind of came of age during the 80s, so that those were my peak years of fandom. But but um, just the players that you got to see on a daily basis back there um, were incredible. I, it's neither here nor there, but I happened to catch a replay of an of a old classic game. This was from, actually from 79. It was a Cubs-Phillies game that ended up 23-22, a 23-22 Cubs-Phillies game from wow. 1979. And it just, you know, there's just something, for me, very nostalgic about watching the baseball of that era. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Talking to Alan Maimon, the co-author of Tim Raines' book, Rock Solid, My Life in Baseball's Fast Lane. And Alan, I'll get you out on this. I have the book that you wrote with Chuck Myron entitled Hits and Misses in the Baseball Draft, and it's very good. Can't recommend it enough, and this one too. With that in mind, what book that you wrote is your favorite? Well, first of all, you're one of the proud and one of the few. <laughs> <laughs> and I, so I appreciate that very much, and I will pass that along to Chuck. Please who, do. Who I will see uh, on induction weekend. He's coming up to Cooperstown with me um, uh, in July. Um, my favorite, I'll, I'll tell you what, the one that I had really had my eye on for a long time, and it totally lived up to my expectations, and especially with his recent uh, passing, I would have to say the Dallas Green uh, book. Okay. Mm-hmm. The, the guy spent 60 years in baseball. He managed the Phillies. He managed the Mets. He managed the Yankees. He was general manager of the Cubs. And on top of that, he's just one of the most outspoken individuals you'll, you'll ever meet. Um, and I just really enjoyed working with him on telling the story of his 60 years in the game. I've, I've enjoyed working with everybody I've worked with, but, but there was something a little bit extra special about working with Dallas. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Alan, thank you for your time. You bet, Jacob. Take care, guys. All right. That was Alan Maimon. He's the co-author of Tim Raines' book, Rock Solid, My Life in Baseball's Fast Lane. Let's take a quick break, but don't go anywhere because there's more of Beyond the Game coming up next on The Voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Oh, hi. Do you know what this is the sound of? It's the sound of me getting rewarded for doing my part to prevent wildfires. See, right now I'm getting a big, remarkably heartfelt bear hug from Smokey Bear. Thanks, big guy. And now we're shaking. Okay. First, I made sure there were no low-hanging branches when I set up my campfire. Hey, Smokey, let me down for just a second. I need to make sure everyone can hear this. Uh, There we go. Then, when we were packing up to leave, I drowned out my campfire, stirred it, drowned it out again, and then made sure to feel it if it was cold. Oh, Smokey Bear really loves it when you do that, don't you, Smokey? Oh, he lets his hugs do the talking. Visit SmokeyBear.com to learn tips to prevent wildfires. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Only you can prevent wildfires. Yo, what happened to your hair? You have to experience what I just experienced. What'd you do? Stick your finger in an electric outlet or something? Close. I just listened to electric air. Electric air? Electric air? Can everyone stop repeating electric air and tell me what electric air is? Electric air will get your heart racing, neurons sparking, and lips smiling. Join me, Tova, as I shock your ears with EDM's greatest hits. Five out of five doctors agree one hour of electric air every week is just what you need to increase your energy and leave you feeling stimulated. Side effects may include uncontrollable mood swings, shuffling, 
and in some extreme cases, headbanging. Too much headbanging, huh? Dude, those side effects are serious. Seriously amazing. <laughs> so join me every Wednesday night at 8 for Electric Air on the voice of NASA Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Hamilton was adopted from a rescue in 2008. <laughs> He really likes to be around people. I get out my mat and I'm doing a downward dog and he's underneath. He's quite the pug about town. He gets invited to a lot of parties. He knows he's a pretty big deal. Look at this little face. I do not love him. Hamilton the Pug, Instagram star and shelter pet. Amazing adoption stories start in shelters. Visit the shelterpetproject.org to find a pet near you. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States and the Ad Council. Jacob Volk. My name is Jacob Volk. Jacob Volk. Wait a minute. Everyone shut up. This is my line Jacob Volk. My name is Jacob Volk. Oh, no. Yeah, it's a Jacob Volk. Yay, it's over now. Stop. 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 No, I will never stop. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to Beyond the Game. How? <laughs> on the voice of How? It's real simple. It's just Adobe Audition. That's all it oh is, my, my friend. You Adobe are, Audition. You are the most creative guy I've ever met. You Thank know you. That? you. You know that? I am Jacob Volk, sitting across from me. Brandon Johnson, you can follow on Twitter, what? at Steph Johnson just... underscore. Dominic Arbolino, you can follow on Twitter, at Darbs5258. Eric Fischetti, you can follow on Twitter, at Sergeant Fish. And Eleanor Chompy, you can follow on Twitter, at E-L-L-E. Hello, Maven. What? You got a Twitter now? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Where have you that. been? <laughs> yeah, that's right. What was where, this? Where last you week? Here? Where no, you here? I think he was out that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh you were out. The, yeah. So I got to get you on Twitter now. So, yeah, Elmer I got did. a Twitter. Okay. okay, nice. And, of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Real Jacob Volk. Number to call if you have something on your mind is 516-572-7440. And whenever we are in the presence of the true hockey maven, we must talk about hockey. The Rangers re-signed Brendan Smith to a four-year deal worth $17.4 million last year. He had nine points in 51 games. Eleanor, what are your thoughts on the deal? Too much money. I agree with you. (laughs) Uh, He's a solid defenseman, don't get me wrong. It's just too much money. And the Rangers don't have a good cap situation to begin with. No. Too much money. Especially when he doesn't contribute too much for offense, at least. Again, again, great defensively, but... I just, I don't think it's worth it. I don't think he's worth it. I don't know. I think it's too much money. Mm-hmm. I agree with you. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. Way too much money. But he did play well in the playoffs. Yeah. He mm-hmm. did. So the Golden Knights traded Mark Mathot to the Dallas Stars for Dylan Ferguson and their 2020 second round pick last year. Mathot had 12 points, all assists in 68 games. Eleanor, who won the trade? The Stars, 100%. Mark Mathot is one of my favorite players. I think he's awesome. I think he's a great defenseman. So 100% the stars. He does a lot of the things that don't show up on the box yes. score. You also mentioned, uh, I remember last week, that you said he could possibly be the captain for the yeah. Vegas Golden Knights. So yeah. obviously that's yeah, not going to happen no, now. now but who's it gonna James be? Neal. But hey, I mean the Golden Knights, the real they're deal, just James Neal. stocking up on picks yes, you know, they throughout are. the years. They're, you know, they're very, really doing it right. They All are right. very active too, Vegas. Y- yeah, yes, they, they are. Be. They yeah. are very active. Well, they got to accumulate assets. Yeah, of course. That's all it is. So the Sabres traded Tyler Ennis, Marcus Foligno, and their 2018 third-round pick to the Wild for Jason Pominville, Marco Scandella, and their 2018 fourth-round pick last year. Ennis had 13 points in 51 games. Foligno had 23 points in 80 games. Pominville had 47 points in 78 games. And Scandella had 13 points in 71 games. Eleanor, who won the trade? I think both teams. I think it's a good trade all around. I think that Jason Pominville going to the Sabres is a very good move because he's a veteran for a very young Sabres team. And I think Felino is the best player in the trade, so that helps out the Wild. And also Marco Scandella is a solid defenseman. Okay. So I think it's a good trade all around. I think the Sabres won it pretty easily. I love that they're getting Jason Pominville back. Pom and P, as a friend of mine used to call him. I think it was a trip down memory lane for me seeing Pominville back on the Sabres. Go ahead, Tom. So I think as of now, Buffalo won the deal. I do, but I think as the season goes along and seeing how uh, Felino and Ennis fit into Minnesota Wilds like their offensive scheme and whatnot, I think it'll pay off for them where they'll eventually win the trade. I okay. think so. 
Okay, I could see not it. So, not, 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 again, as like Eleanor said, it's great for both sides, definitely. But yes. I think eventually, I think Minnesota, like if you're saying who won it, Minnesota will take that. But right now, Buffalo won it. Yeah. To me, it's pretty slam dunk Buffalo. It'll be like Bob McAdoo with the Buffalo Braves slam dunk. <laughs> 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 so the Senators re signed Mike Condon to a three year deal 